Are you struggling to generate leads for your business? Do you want to achieve sustainable revenue growth and gain a competitive edge? Join me as Mark Osborne shares the solution to help you attain that outcome. He will provide insights on how to implement a systems approach to marketing so you can achieve consistent revenue growth and outperform your competition. Tune in today. Welcome to Biz Help For You, the show that saves you the expensive learning curve by providing advice from industry experts in every facet of the entrepreneurial journey. Too many small businesses collapse. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 20% fail within their first year, and less than 35% make it to their 10th anniversary. The goal of this podcast is to change that statistic. So if you're interested in learning more to be a successful entrepreneur, tune in today. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. Mark Osborne, a distinguished figure recognized as a marketing technology trailblazer by Ad Age magazine and a number one best-selling author on B2B marketing and sales, offers valuable insights and expertise for entrepreneurs. With decades of experience in integrating sales, marketing, and customer success for early stage SaaS tech, and B2B professional service firms, Mark has a proven track record of delivering substantial revenue growth for his clients. His emphasis on building revenue systems and strategic approaches to revenue growth can greatly benefit you by providing tools and strategies to boost your sales and revenue, potentially doubling revenue and pipelines in a short period. You can look to Mark Osborne for guidance in developing effective revenue-focused strategies for your businesses. So Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. It's a real pleasure to be here. I am excited to have you here. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Uh, but before I ask you questions on the topic, I'd love for you just to share a little bit of your story and how you began working with entrepreneurs. Sure. So I actually, I have a sort of an interesting story of how I got started in marketing. When I was in college, so this is the 90s, you might remember, or you, you might be too young to remember this, but people didn't have access to the internet every day. It wasn't in their pocket. So, uh, <laughs> they would actually sort of like pin notes to a, a billboard. And there were things called, mm -hmm. you know, BBS or billboard services. And so they were like, post a note, and then they would come back, you know, a week or so later and check the responses that they'd gotten. And usually their username was their email address because there was no such thing as spam. People were excited to get emails. Mm -hmm. And so at the time I was playing in bands for a living and actually managing some bands. And so I noticed that people were trading sort of bootleg concert tapes that they had made a specific artist in a specific market. So Dave Matthews band in Atlanta, for example. So now I know that you live somewhere near Atlanta and that you like bands like Dave Matthews band. So when one of my bands that sounded like Dave Matthews went to Atlanta, I'd send an email blast to all of these people that I had collected from these uh, Usenet groups. And I was selling out concerts for little unknown bands. So that led to a job at a record label and then led to a job at a radio station, which ultimately led to a, a career in marketing. And I was always really passionate about using technology to make sense of data so that I could sort of create these kind of one-to-one -one relationships at scale. So give people what they were really interested in using the data about them. And I got so into sort of all of this data and I worked for a company that had sort of the fire hose of data coming out of Twitter and Facebook, and they used artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to predict who would respond better to advertising based on you know, what they had engaged with in the past. And I had really gotten deep into this sort of idea of kind of growth hacking and, you know, gaming the algorithm or, you know, finding little tricks and, and tips to uh, sort of, you know, cut through that. And so much so that Ad Age Magazine named me one of the top 25 people in the world at, at using data and technology for marketing. But as I got deeper and deeper into it, I realized that it was really impossible to keep up with the pace. So there's a, the MarTech conference publishes the sort of landscape of marketing technology and data vendors. And in 2014, it had like 150 different companies on it. This year, it has over 10,000. So it's really just sort of growing at a breakneck pace. You just can't keep up with, you know, all of these sort of growth hacks. And I realized as I worked with more and more 
sort of large, successful companies, that the ones that were achieving this sort of like doubling of growth every year that the startups were really aspiring to, they weren't chasing growth hacks. They were building systems that were grounded in sort of fundamentals of marketing. And so as I realized that, it, it really sort of inspired me to sort of take a step back and return to those fundamentals of marketing, of really understanding your customer, of building systems that scale and are repeatable, that isn't sort of dependent on, you know, a magic bullet or a growth hack. And that's really uh, how I got into working with other companies is sort of taking those lessons that I learned over the last 20 years and, and then helping sort of early stage companies to get to, you know, from 1 million to 10 million uh, and to really sort of achieve that growth that they're looking for. Hmm. Nice. Well, I always love to hear, you know, stories of how people got to where they are. So thank you for sharing, you know, where you were and how you got to where you are now, because I think it like highlights why you are an expert and can share like the information that you are going to be sharing with us today too. So my first question really is a lot of times we hear that, you know, it's just, you have to call so many people and then you'll finally get, you know, some good leads. And so people were always focused on quantity, but quality obviously is what's important. So can you talk about shifting that mindset from just, you know, get out there and get a whole bunch of names to really focusing on those quality leads so that you can generate more revenue? Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually something that I, I think is, is really important. And I've seen so many times that businesses get really obsessed with the, the quantity. I need more leads. I need more leads. I need more leads. And in fact, the book that I published earlier this year is called, Are Your Leads Killing Your Business? Because, you know, we all know this sort of 80-20 rule that, you know, 80% of your revenues comes from just 20% of your customers. And so I, as I thought about that, working with, you know, some early stage B2B SaaS technology services firms, I thought, how can you focus 80% of your efforts on the 20% of, of leads that make up 80% of your revenue? And, and what I saw was that companies that don't build systems that allow them to do that, they get distracted by the quantity. And so mm -hmm. they are then sort of chasing customers that aren't really well qualified. Uh, and so th those customers wind up, you know, not really understanding the value proposition that you bring to market. And so they want to negotiate on price. So they really mm -hmm. cut your margins down. And then they don't really understand why you're building the product the way that you are because they don't understand the value proposition. So they want you to customize it. So they're really hard to service. And then they, it, they wind up churning out of your business and they don't renew and they don't grow with you and they don't make any referrals or testimonials because they were never really, you know, sort of a good fit to begin with. And so when your company is, you know, sort of servicing these types of customers, it actually pulls you behind the marketplace and it can wind up killing your business because your competitors have built systems that allow them to identify oh, this is a really well-qualified prospect. I want to put all of my energies and efforts on, you know, marketing to them, selling to them, closing them and growing them. And those well-qualified prospects, you know, bring you ideas and they're happy to grow with you as you are developing the solutions that, you know, will really lead to your company dominating the marketplace. But without systems in place, to identify and attract those right prospects and then accelerate them through the sales pipeline and then activate those clients for renewals, upsells and referrals. Without those systems, you'll wind up killing your business by chasing the, the quantity of sort of unqualified leads. Mm -hmm. So you said systems in there a couple of times and someone might be listening and saying like, I don't know what you mean in terms of creating a system so that I'm only reaching out to those qualified leads. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So, you know, a, a system is fundamentally a checklist that ensures, you know, a high quality output every time. Uh, and, and we have a phrase around here that, you know, sort of B2B growth systems set you free. They set you free from worrying about, you know, will our marketing and sales activities pay off? Like, will we hit the forecast that we are trying to hit? They set you free from sort of the, the strife 
of you know different teams fighting with each other where marketing might say well i brought in a lot of leads but sales says but none of them were qualified if, mm -hmm. if you're working together on a system you can have a lot more harmony within your business and then even systems that you know sort of encourage that ongoing renewal upsell and referral and so the way that we work with clients to sort of focus on that is we start by identifying, is it attraction systems, excel, you know, attracting the right prospects or acceleration systems, moving them through the sales pipeline or activation systems, getting more renewals, upsells, or referrals. And we've worked with companies for the last 20 years. So we have a number of benchmarks that we use to sort of diagnose, which is your biggest area of opportunity. And then once we've diagnosed that, we'll look at what is that sort of critical customer flow look like? Like, how do they go from, you know, being a stranger to being, you know, a prospect? Or how do they go mm -hmm. from being a prospect to, to being a customer? And how do they go from being a customer to, you know, renewing or serving as a referral in the marketplace? We really sort of define each of those steps. And then we make hypotheses on how to improve the metrics for each of those steps. And then we can implement those hypotheses over time and track our progress. And it's mm -hmm. that sort of objective system that allows the entire team to come together. And that's it's no longer, well, you did a bad job. You, you know, you let us down on on this. Instead, it's, well, did the system deliver the outcome that we wanted? And if not, how do we all work together on improving the system instead of pointing the finger and blaming a, an individual? Right. Well, and you talked there about metrics, too, and a lot of people probably don't even have anything associated with that. They're just hoping numbers come in and hopefully we close. You know, so can you talk about maybe some of the metrics they should be using to track all of that? Absolutely. So the the sort of rules of thumb that that we use is, you know, if you think about those attraction systems, you don't want any single channel to represent more than 50% of your volume of leads. If you don't have diversity of channels, then you're really sort of putting yourself at risk. So if all of your leads come from word of mouth, well, potentially you should explore some advertising options. Or if all of your leads come from Facebook or you know from a, a particular advertising platform, you want to find ways to diversify. And then to sort of think through, well, am I paying too much for those leads? We use the sort of the, you know, cost to acquire a customer or CAC is the term that people use. And for early stage companies, what we'll say is you shouldn't pay any more to acquire a customer than your you know, sort of your net profits are off of them in the first year. And then if you have, you know, sort of longer term sort of relationships with customers, then you want to sort of think about the lifetime value and you want to have sort of a three to one ratio of the lifetime value of that customer to the cost to acquire that customer. And so we, we use that as sort of a measure of health. And then as we think about these acceleration systems, we'll look at, uh, you know, how long does it take to go from a, a sort of qualified lead to you know, a sale, a close. And then we think about, you know, what are your success metrics at each stage? And typically we see that companies that aren't closing at least 50% of their qualified leads, there's a real problem there mm -hmm. because they're, they're bringing in too many leads, that, that quantity issue that they're, they're considering them qualified when they're not really qualified. And the way to mm -hmm. solve that is to really think through your ideal customer profile and really detail not only the firmographics of your best customers, like the size of the company or the type of business that they're in, but also the context that sent them to market to look for a solution like yours. What was the context that really sort of brought them to market? That's a good guide for understanding your, your best customers. And then finally, on the sort of activation systems of you know, sort of renewals, upsells, and referrals, we typically recommend that companies are looking for at least 30% of their lead volume coming from referrals. And so if you don't have mm -hmm. systems in place to ask for referrals on a regular basis, you, you're probably not generating that type of volume of, of referrals. And then we also will, you know, sort of suggest that you get, you know, a, a minimum churn, but normally 80% is the health metric. If you're churning more than 80% of your customers, you've got something wrong with your renewal systems mm -hmm. and, and, and with the services that you're offering. And so by sort of diagnosing 
those three areas and then focusing in on one of those areas, we oftentimes see that, you know, clients can double the revenues then as, as short as 90 days from one of those one of those areas by implementing specific solutions and systems to improve those metrics. And obviously people want to be able to grow their revenue and, you know, it's not going to be immediate, but even 90 days, like you said, that's pretty quick, I think, for being able to double you know, revenue. I, I think, I mean, if you're starting up and you're saying like, oh, I make 5,000, then <laughs> that's easy. But, you know, maybe if you're at a hundred thousand dollars a month to get that to 200,000 a month or something in 90 days, that's, that's pretty intriguing. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone then who is saying, well, I think I have the niche, you know, picked out so that I'm focused on getting the word out there. And I, and I think I have a system in place where I can kind of qualify them before they're coming in, but I still struggle getting them kind of through the kind of, I guess a lot of people sometimes call it the funnel, right? Getting it from mm -hmm. the, when they first find out about us until they become a customer. So do you have any ideas on how we can improve that process? What would you say? Yeah. So one of the, the key things is, is really this sort of understanding your ideal customer and then understanding the sort of personas or avatars of the decision makers. When you really understand that and the, the context in which they're operating and how they're making decisions, that allows you to do a better job of sort of qualifying and, and and nurturing them. And one of the things that we see happen far too often is companies will assume, well, if you came to my website, you're qualified. Or if you downloaded my white paper, you're qualified. But in fact, you're probably not. And, and mm -hmm. there's, you know, an old rule out there. People say that, you know, there's a 95-5 ratio, like 5% of your market is actively searching for a solution at any given time. The other 95% they might be searching for a solution like yours eventually, and maybe they downloaded that white paper or they visited your website or they attended a webinar that you're hosting because they're interested in it, but they're not really ready to purchase. And so if you attack those people with the same sort of ferocity that you do the 5%, well, you're going to wind up wasting a lot of time on them because they're just not ready. And so one of mm -hmm. the things that we sort of help companies do is identify, well, what are, what's some information that can give you a signal that they're moving from that 95% of no thanks, I'm just looking to that 5% of I'm ready to buy. And, and oftentimes you can either get external data sources, like they've been on a website where they're, you know, evaluating multiple vendors in, in your space, or you can have different types of content. So content that talks more about the category of your solution or, you know, why that type of solution might, you know, be a thing that a company would want to solve versus more middle funnel content, which is about, you know, why you solve it the way that you solve it. And then sort of lower funnel content about like how to, you know, get a return on investment when you invest in these types of solutions. Well, you could see that this type of content up here is people that, no thanks, I'm just looking. And so when they're consuming that type of content, put them into some sort of nurturing uh, sequence where they mm -hmm. get an email from you every so often, or they get, you know, video content from you served by email or, or text message that sort of encourages them and, and sort of moves them through their customer journey, but doesn't sort of assume that they're ready to buy today. But then once they start to engage with that content that indicates that maybe they're ready to buy today, that's when you really sort of pounce on them, give them the full court press, as it were, uh, mm -hmm. in order to sort of encourage and, and pull them through that sales pipeline. Right. Well, that could be a little bit hard to know exactly when that is. But like you said, kind of figuring out when is the right time to really approach someone. And that's going to take some learning as we're going through work, you know, entrepreneurs, we make mistakes sometimes too, That's right? True. But learning out what those systems, you know, may be. So I know you've talked about a few different things in, you know, the last, you know, 15 minutes since we've chatted about, you know, what you could be doing to find those leads and having systems and growing your revenue. <clears throat> so do you have any like specific examples of like these revenue systems 
that you can share because things are getting harder right now, right? Money's a little bit tighter. Sometimes we have to like pinch that budget back a little bit. So, you know, what can they still be doing to be generating that revenue, even in like some of the financial times we have where we have to be careful with the money we have? Yeah. So, the, I mean, a lot of marketing and sales is making bets. So you're sort of like making a bet that this message is going to resonate with your marketplace, or you're making a bet that, you know, this audience is going to, you know, respond better to your, to your messaging and implementing systems sort of improves the odds of those bets. It's, you know, it's doubling down on 11, statistically speaking, like you're going to wind up making better bets when you have these systems in place. And so the the first thing that you know we really sort of focus on is understanding the the marketplace in a way that you can have really differentiated positioning. And so the way mm-hmm. that we really encourage companies to think about that is to really understand, you know, what is their customer uh, looking for? Who is their customer? Who's their best customer? or likely to be their best customer if they're still a really early stage. What is it that they're looking for in, in a solution? Like what's the context that they're living in? What are the other options that they have in the marketplace? So do some research on your competitors and you know how they're approaching the marketplace and really think through these sort of points of parity where you have a match with, with your competitors. And then those points of differentiation, because that's how you win is, is by being differentiated. You, you can lose for not having parity, but you don't win for having parity with the rest of the marketplace. You win for having differentiation and being different than your competitors. And then think through you know, those points of differentiation. What are the reasons to believe or sort of proof points that your differentiation is, is really true, that you'll actually mm-hmm. deliver on your promise to customers? And so coming up with a, a very crystallized and precise positioning statement that talks about the customers that you serve and the and the context that they're in, why they would go to market looking for it, and sort of the relative competitive set that you're competing with and why you're different and better. And then those reasons to believe and to trust that promise that you're making, having that really crisp positioning strategy, we have seen make, you know, a 10x improvement in the effectiveness of, of your ads so that you could spend 10 times less and get the mm-hmm. same results because you're much more focused on who you're wanting to speak to and the problem that they're that they're dealing with and that, that re- will resonate to them and then why you're perfectly suited to solve that. Once you really get that crisp, you can save a lot of money on advertising because it, it just works a lot better when you have that sort of really strong story. The other thing that, you know, from a systems perspective that uh, really helps to save money is really detailing that customer journey. How do they go from being aware that they have a problem and deciding whether or not they should solve it to prioritizing, okay, this is a problem we're going to solve, you know, in the next six months or three months or whatever, the sort of typical decision cycle to, you know, this is the way that we're going to solve it to this is the company that we're going to use to to solve it. There are different sort of informational needs at each stage of that customer journey. And if you really think through where do they seek out information, what information are they seeking out to move from one stage to the next? How can we influence the criteria that they're using to evaluate options to sort of shape the way that they look at the market? When you really understand that, you can find lots of really low cost ways to influence the decision making of your customers beyond just spending money on advertising. And so that having a system that allows you to really diagnose and understand the informational needs at each of those stages so that you can then create the information and deliver it in unique ways can be a valuable way to save money, but still make an impact in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the key, I think, as you're talking about in today's discussion really is figuring out who that ideal target really is and having a system in place where you can capture those leads and move them through your journey, you know, to get them to buy your product and service and differentiating yourself. So they know, like, why should they use you instead of someone, you know, that they've heard of before, too. So it's important to do that. But I know sometimes entrepreneurs think, 
I know I should be doing these things, but I wear like 20 hats and I'm just working so much, just trying to keep up. So do you have any maybe ideas that you could share with them of how they can carve out just a little bit of that time to really focus on this? Sure. You know, it, it, it starts with, and, and, you know, for solo entrepreneurs that are wearing so many hats, sometimes you just need external help. And that's really what we do at Modern Revenue Strategies is we sort of bring that, that marketing lens to play for companies that don't have the resources or don't want to hire a full-time marketing executive because that brings with it, you know, a lot of other things. A lot of times they want equity or, you know, mm -hmm. the, the marketing role can, can be a, a pretty strategic role within a company. Hiring an agency, oftentimes they just tell you to spend more money on ads, but you, you really sort of need that, that marketing expertise and that lens. But the, the key thing is really sort of thinking through and, and creating sort of time within your business to evaluate you know, our, what are our best customers and how are they different from our less than best? And we do a, a very simple exercise where we'll take everyone that spent money with you in the last two years, rank them by how much money they spent, find that you know, top 20% of volume customers that may represent about 80% of your revenues, and then start to really define them. And how are they different from that other 80%? And that one exercise can bring so much clarity to a business that can really be transformational in the way you think about going to market. And you can do that in just a couple hours. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip too, because I think a lot of times people probably don't analyze their customer base and who was spending the most. And the part that really caught my attention was we we're saying is how are those top 20 different than the other 80 that you have, right? And they're already all your customers, right? But really analyzing your own customer base, I think is really one of those key points that you just shared. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, so any final takeaways, maybe that you have something you want to share that I didn't know to ask the question that would be helpful on this topic? Sure. So uh, actually, uh, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and talk with your listeners and viewers. And in fact, I want to give a, a free gift to anyone listening. So the first 50 folks that go to modernrevenuestrategies.com slash free download, they'll get a free copy of the book, Are Your Leads Killing Your Business? And there's a proven five-step framework in here for growing your business. Uh, and it's specifically designed for, you know, B2B SaaS technology, B2B services that are dealing with sort of long sales cycles with complex buying committees of, you know, a decision maker and an influencer and a champion for sort of large contracts. That, that's really the context that the book is, is written to serve. But for folks that are dealing with that, there's you know proven five-step framework. Not only will you get the download for free, but with that comes the templates and calculators and, and lots of other tools that you can use to implement this in your business right away, uh, as well as hours of free training videos, all for free for the first 50 folks that go to modernrevenuestrategies.com slash free download. Nice. Well, thanks. And if anyone, and I appreciate you sharing that offer too, that's fabulous. But if anyone is listening and has questions and they want to reach out to connect with you, how can they find you? Sure. Mark with a K at modernrevenuestrategies.com. Perfect. Well, thank you, Mark, for being a guest on my show and talking on this topic. I think, you know, it's important for us to have these conversations and people may have heard, you know, a lot of this information before too, but sometimes, like I said, when you just are hearing something again, something really stands out. And I appreciate your talking about the differentiation and again, having systems and identifying those great leads. So you're not taking time focused on not so great leads, you know, so I appreciate your chatting with me today. Absolutely. It was real. It was a good time. Thank you listeners for tuning in today. I hope you found this topic interesting and enjoyed the informative discussion. Would you please share my show with those, you know, and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. I'd really appreciate your support. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to my guest at any of the links that they shared, or you could send me a message at media at a b and p.com. I hope you can join me for my next interview. And remember, you can connect with me on Twitter, 
Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. This episode is sponsored by Affordable Bookkeeping and Payroll Services. If you are overwhelmed trying to handle the financial aspects of your business, ABNP is here to help. Contact us today to discuss your needs at 310-534-5577 or contact at abandp.com. My team and I are eager to assist you. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.